thing you can say about guns. They don't work without a firing pin to hit the primer. So, let's figure out how to go from this to this. Hi, my name is Jim Green and I'm a gunsmith. The name of my shop is Gunworks in Millbridge, Maine. Today's video, we're going to center drill a bolt for a KP-44. Now, KP-44 is a full auto submachine gun that was made in Finland. It's basically a 9mm copy of the Soviet PPS-43 from World War II. The Finns ended up reverse engineering these guns and they made them in 9mm. Now you have a full auto bolt but this is what you cannot use in your semi-auto legal builds. So what we're going to do is, first thing you do is to get this bolt started, you take your extractor out. Once you remove the extractor, you've got a fixed firing pin. That fixed firing pin can be easily removed once the extractor is out. Next thing you're going to have to do is center drill the entire bolt through its entire length. Make a separate firing pin and a firing pin retainer. And then what you're going to do is convert this from firing open bolt in full auto to closed bolt with a hammer striker against the firing pin. This is a straight blowback pistol or carbine rifle if you make it with a 16 inch barrel. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how these things are drilled out. You notice how this bolt has an odd shape to it. So it's a little bit difficult to set this up for a good center drilling. So let's take a look at what I have over here. What I've done is I've put my four jaw independent chuck back in the, in the lathe right here. And this is a four jaw independent, which means each one of these little lugs right here, you can turn it and adjust it in or out. The other uh, chuck that I use is a three jaw or a four jaw scrolling chuck. So basically what I've done to set this odd shape up is if you look right here, I've made a small little collar to go around the outside of the bolt. And I'm going to set this up by setting the dial indicator on that. As close as humanly possible with this thing, I mean, it's not going to be exactly rocket science, it's not exactly perfect, but I've got it running concentric to within two thousandths. That's going to get me pretty darn close on center drilling. I'm going to take a look. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a quick break. I'll be right back after I put my dial indicators away. This is the little stock collar I made. All I did was machine this out of aluminum bar stock. The diameter, outside diameter is not really important. What you want to do though is cut this thing until it's concentric. Now you'll notice on the side right here I drilled it out and tapped it and put a little 648 screw in there and threaded this thing until I've got a little collar I can turn a little screw inside the collar that I can turn with a screwdriver to lock this collar in place around the bolt and this is what gives me something I can run my dial indicator off of where it just simply slides over the end and locks into place that's what I set my uh, four jaw independent chuck up with so we've got that removed let's get started flood coolant going right now. In addition to the flood coolant going, I've got a short drill bit that we're going to start off with and we're going to drill this thing to the full depth of the short bit. Then later we're going to switch out to a longer bit so we can reach full length through the bolt. Now, even though this thing looks like it's a little bit off center, we've got the drill lined up with the center of the original firing pin hole. So let's get started. Feed your bit in slowly. Back it out a little bit and brush your chips off the flutes of the bit. About as far as we can with this short bit to get a start. So 
now let's switch out to the longer bit. sure how well you can see that. You'll notice there's a, uh, a little hole right here. That's where the that's where the recoil spring goes in the side right there. And I'm starting to get some chips coming out of there. So let's keep blowing them out. At this point, the coolant's not really doing a whole lot of good up in there. So I'm going to switch the coolant off. And I'm going to switch out to a good cutting fluid. Get all those chips out of there. I'm going to turn the flood coolant off, switch out to a cutting fluid. Keep squirting cutting fluid up in there and on the drill and going small little cuts at a time, removing it, brushing the chips off, blowing some of the chips up out of there, getting get as much of that out of there as we can. Keep it cool and keep it clean. If you get a buildup of chips in these deep holes, what it's going to do is it's going to get in a bind on your flutes right here and snap your drill bit off in there. Then you're up the creek without a paddle. All right, we're going to put us a little bit of cutting oil up in there. I'm going to go all the way up in the hole. There we go. And then I'm going to put a little bit of the cutting oil here on the bit. All right, let's start it up and get to drilling a little bit more. You don't want to jam the bit all the way in place really hard, but go in kind of slow until you feel it just touch and then drill you a little more. There we go. Blow some more of those chips out of there. about one inch and I'll rotate slowly and get about one or two tick marks showing. You see it? There's one tick mark. There's my second one. So back off, pull the bit out, and then start cleaning everything off. That seems like an awful lot of work, but I want to drill this thing right, and I don't want any kind of uh, damage to the bit. I definitely don't want it to bind up inside with all those chips, and definitely don't want it to snap off up in there. If it breaks off in there, that's a pretty hard bit. Cutting some pretty hard metal here. You break a bit off inside there, you're going to have a hard time getting it drilled out again. The deeper you get into this thing, the, the smaller and the shallower you want your uh, cuts to be because really there's not a whole lot of place for that uh, pile of metal chips to go in there. You don't want to get in a bind. So actually you can see the metal shavings come slinging out of that side hole right there when I pull the bit out. You ready? So we're getting deeper and deeper in. We're about halfway in right now. You can see all the metal shavings coming out. And you're still getting metal shavings out of this little hole in the side right there. So you've got to be a little careful. Make sure you stop pretty frequently. Keep those things blown out as much as you can. Alright, looks 
not going through because it's uh, it's freewheeling. So pull it out. Let's bar our chips out of here. Ideally, this thing will be dead perfect center. Sometimes I'm a little bit off, you know, two thousandths on this end. It's hard to say where it may come out the other end. But since we're using AK-47 fire control components, the hammer is going to be pretty wide. Ideally, you want it to hit dead in the center of that new firing pin hole, but if it's just a little bit off, you can still use it. So let's see where we're at. We're really, really close. You can see though, two thousandths off, you can see where your hole come out, just about dead center, but a little bit high. That's still going to be good enough to use. So, that's a way that you can uh, center drill a long bolt like this to make a firing pin. Now, there are several other steps that need to be done to this bolt before it can be used. One, I'm going to take this little lip off the bottom right here. Then I'm going to go back and I'm going to have a stainless steel machine screw I pick up at the hardware store. I'm going to measure the major diameter of that and the thread pitch. What I'm going to do, I'm going to drill a hole into this uh, bolt face, remove the old bolt face, tap this, then I'm going to screw the machine bolt in, cut it off and grind it flush. Center drill that. That'll be my new face for the bolt out of stainless steel. Now in order for this bolt to work, this outside diameter will have to be turned down a little bit because this large full auto bolt is not going to fit in those receivers. Okay. Also, since there are denial rails in the receiver, you're going to have to set it up in the milling machine here and mill a large slot down the full center line of the bolt after you machine the diameter. Now if you want to see how all those steps are done, Look at my other video on Down East Gunworks on YouTube and look for the KP44 build from scratch. That will give you an idea of where we're going. I hope this helps some of you guys out that want to give this a try. Otherwise, if you need this done, give me a call. Thanks for watching this latest video. Down East Gunworks is now shifting towards building custom rifles. What you see in this video interests you or if you have a special project in mind, Contact the shop through Jim at DowneastGunworks.com. And a special thanks to the folks that contributed to this project.